Indiva Limited, NDVAF stock. On the OTC, they are a Canadian producer. Two things stand out for me. Number two, they claim to have the number two edible in all of Canada. They are distributing to all 13 provinces. But the other thing I like about this company, they're the distributor for certain Bang chocolate products. They have a toffee up there and a couple other products up there. Sales of those are doing very well. Should edibles really take off? And Diva Limited's main focus being edibles, they do have flour, but their focus is edibles. And should Canadian cannabis continue to increase and the percentage increase with regard to uh, edibles, this is a stock with a lot of upside. In the meantime, economies of scale are important. They're doing pretty well with operating efficiencies, falling a little shy on margins, gross margins, but that's a factor of increasing revenue. They just put in 35 million in the next two years. They're hoping to hit up to 85 million in revenue for 2023. These are big gains that should get them where they're going. Let's take a look at some numbers. Before we jump in, looking at the numbers and the charts I've got for you, I have launched three different video courses, combining them all available to you at one combined price. You can save a lot of money jump on that. One of the things I explained, two of the things that I am explaining, one of them is looking at ratios. I've got about 20 different ratios that I'm comparing and showing you how to look at ratios and compare stocks. This allows you the ability to pick winning stocks. Another thing, very important with what's going on right now, how to look at economic indicators. Find out which one are the leading indicators and which one are lagging indicators but you don't need a PhD. Given that, this course has been doing very well. I just launched it a couple weeks ago. Will be available the first week of July. You'll want to get in on the pre-sales right now. Given that, let's start taking a look at some numbers here. Here's Indiva's revenue. I think they fell about 6% for the quarter. Now they printed about 35 million, 38 million I think is what they printed. Uh, expectations are for about 50 million for the next year and then 85 million, I think it's 55 million and then 85 million in the next two years. Given that, this is a tremendous upside in increase that's going to be doubling in the next two years. Economies of scale are going to be important. When you start looking at these growth stocks and you see them putting together their plan, mind you, every cannabis company out there has a plan, but the ones that are executing it and getting there are going to be the winners versus, I won't name names, but you know which, which ones I'm thinking about off the top of my head. Economies of scale, if you have a building that costs $10,000 a month, but you're only pushing through 10,000 units. Each unit has a pretty big dollar amount attached to it to paying that rent. What happens when you double revenue, when you push through 20,000 units? This is what economies of scale does. And, and it's probably the one thing about Indiva that I'm looking at the most, where they need the most help, Gross margins are coming in roughly 20%. That's a bit low. And if you look at this chart, I always try to keep this chart right at 100. The reason why is simply this. You're looking for the S&P 500 is about 55%. Some of the best cannabis stocks out there printing 60, 65%. I have some that I look at from time to time that are in 70% uh, with gross margins. Hopefully they remain consistent. Given this chart, when you look at it, a bit on the low side, okay, economies of scale, they're about to double their revenue over the course of the next two years. Someone who's looking at this for, at, from the angle of value investing and a growth stock, this is where you can see like a slingshot of potential. Economies of scale are very important. And this is what gets these companies to profitability. 
operating efficiencies. These guys are printing some pretty decent numbers when it comes to operating efficiencies, and, and, I, and I like that right there. Operating efficiencies are operating costs over top of total revenue. Basically, what's the back office cost on a per revenue basis? Most of the best companies in the cannabis industry are printing between 30 and 35 percent, call it 32 and a half. Great, awesome. The S&P 500 is printing about 17 and a half percent on average which means these companies need to keep their operating costs exactly the same, but double their revenue. Indiva is about to push from 35 million to 85 million. Then they're going to push that to about 150 million two years after that. I've got the future uh, projections for these for this particular company. So they have that opportunity. But you're not going to really be able to build up your business without spending a little more in operating costs. So that's something that we kind of have to look at it from a balancing perspective. But given where they are, they're sitting in a really good position. Plus, we go backwards, we look at gross margins. They're pushing 35 million, 55 million, 85 million, 120, 150 revenue year after year after year after year. They're going to get there with their gross margins based on economies of scale. So you're looking at a company that really will grow. They've got some great products and they're going to get there. But of course, I mean, the stock's trading at 13 cents. But they don't have the monopoly on this one. This is every single cannabis stock. EBITDA versus revenue, negative still. Uh, and I, I kept, when I did the projection here, I kept it pretty soft. One of the first sort of milestones that needs to be hit is for a company to hit EBITDA profitability. I give these guys kind of the benefit of the doubt. I gave them about 17.5% EBITDA to revenue based on future revenue for this year and then the next two, three, four years thereafter. Um, this is where scaling up. EBITDA really does answer the one question, is this company potentially going to be profitable? These guys are close enough with regard to EBITDA versus revenue. All right. They have a plan and they're selling enough to cover their basic core costs. They're almost there. Clearly, they're still just a little shy, but we're talking single digits and they'll get there. Once you get to that level, once you get to the point where you are clearing your basic costs, then it's a matter of scaling up, doubling your revenue, which these guys are going to do pretty much two times over the course of the next five years. This is where profitability will hit. Two things I'm kind of concerned about looking at this cash on hand. They do have some equity, but their cash relative to uh, debt, very low. They're kind of always, they have a burn rate. They're blowing through some cash. They have total equity. Let's push forward. Not exactly moving upward. You want to see sustained growth in total equity. This is probably the downside with these guys. They don't have a tremendous amount of cash on hand, which when it comes to cash on hand, imagine this. Okay, these guys are negative. All right. But they're not negative in total equity. They're not underwater. But if they were underwater, imagine being in a car filled up with oxygen in your just submerge yourself into a lake. The oxygen in your vehicle, in that comp the compartment, that's your cash on hand. You're underwater. Hopefully, that gives you an analogy to understand how important enough sufficient cash on hand is. You also want to see total equity moving higher progressively. Even if it's just like 1% a quarter, you're continually growing. And that's important. 
these guys have stalled a little bit on their revenue growth, but they're projecting some decent growth in the future. They've just kind of opened up. I think they just got into their 13th province. Hopefully what they can do is really target sort of the bigger areas for potential growth. Um, I know 50% of the population of Canada is like all in this one area right around the Great Lakes area, Toronto area. Um, companies that are going to be focusing there, they're really going to be kind of congested in that area and really kind of spending less to get potentially more revenue. Unfortunately, they'll probably have a lot of competition, so that'll be difficult. Nonetheless, want to see total equity start moving upward. Not seeing it there. Really low cash on hand. So although these guys do have a future, uh, I see some balancing needing to be done. All right, so we're looking at $40 million for this year almost probably about 57 and a half million 55 to 60 million in 23 85 million in 24 2025 120 and then 150 these are some big numbers uh if they're able to hit these numbers simultaneously if they can maintain a solid cash level and start increasing total equity then the projections I have here have a solid opportunity. That's the balancing act with this potential here. Every quarter, every six months or so, I'm going to go back and look at each of these projections and say, okay, so cash on hand is this, total debt is that. Therefore, it converts these sort of projections in whatever manner it does. But that's probably the crux of what we're seeing is not enough cash on hand, total equity, not moving upward they're going to have to borrow against that equity and if they continue to do that they might get closer and closer to some numbers that uh, just aren't exactly awesome here we're looking at this uh perpetual growth rate i gave them a 25 but uh enterprise value ebit multiple i kept this pretty soft this is a tiny company i think they have like a market cap of 13 million so i'm just going to look at them and just swoop them up cash you're trading at this we'll double it there you go um they've got debt of about 25 million and about 2 million in cash shares outstanding 146 million so given where they are five years from now they're going to be printing about 150 million so you're looking at a dollar per revenue per share now we go backwards to some of my other videos ayr you know, I haven't really gone through and looked to see who competes with those guys, but AYR, you're buying $20 future revenue per share. That's huge, uh, especially given where their stock price is today and where their revenue per share is today, that growth rate. These guys on the lower end, when you compare these kinds of companies, a lot of things I like about this company a lot of things I don't like about this company. Their, their foundation for total equity being one of them. Uh, equity value, again, was about 13 cents. Brought in market cap of about 19 million. Uh, here is your unlevered cash flow that you can see down at the bottom there. And finally, intrinsic value, 386. 2,800% upside increase, but with a whole lot of caveats. What are you going to do about your cash on hand? Your burn rate. Got to get there. Uh, selling some great products. And a bigger fish is going to look at that and say, you're, you've got the number two edible in Canada. You also the, the distributor for bang chocolates in Canada. That's interesting. Because those fit a huge segment of the edible areas. Uh, maybe high tide. Maybe Sundial. Sundial has their own um, dispensary system that they picked up up in Canada. Picking up a company like this 
you're going to completely fulfill that edible category. So this is a company where M&A, from an M&A perspective, they're probably going to get gobbled up. By whom? No idea. I've got 108 different companies that I'm looking at right now on the website. Five of them are gone here in the next couple of months because they're already being acquired. Two and a half years from now, I'll have 50 companies on there because companies are going to want to do two things, grow the company, keep the costs contained. And how do you do that? One way you do that is you merge M&A activity. This is a company that will probably be, get, be consumed via M&A activity. Looking at the stock chart here, like every other cannabis stock out there. And when it comes to these cannabis stocks, um, I'm still, we are told by Senator Schumer that um, <clears throat> something will happen before August 6th break. It's either the 5th or the 6th. I think Friday is the last day for Congress. Then they take up a, a break. We are told by Schumer that their, the Senate version will hit the floor before then. After the break, they will probably vote on it, whatever they do, however the process happens. But the House of Representatives has to look at it, plus the House of Representatives already voted on something, they'll send it to the Senate. They're completely different, and that's fine. What happens is the House will look at it and say, well, we passed this, you pass that, they merge everything together, re-vote on everything, then send it to the executive. So you're looking for something to hit in the next 40 days, 45 days, sure. Given that, looking for a vote in September, October, just before the election. Look at the timing. If this hits, once the Senate version hits, people are going to start getting interested. Like November 2020 interested. Start looking at those charts. People got interested in just the hope, not the reality. But we're at that moment when that reality is right now. So should the Senate version actually drop, you're going to see a pickup in activity. Here's something else. I posted something up on my um, uh, forum. Someone asked a question over the weekend. Assets are just getting destroyed. Look at crypto. Look at the stock market. Down about 20 to 25% in the stock market. Crypto is down somewhere between 75 to 90% depending on the, the currency. Every one of those individuals should there be any kind of movement in cannabis. And you can correlate that movement to an event. Guess what happens? All those eyeballs that are desperate to win back what they just lost are really going to start picking up. They're really going to start looking at cannabis stocks. So over the course of the next 45 days, things could get really interesting. I've been talking about this all the way since like back in October of last year, laying out what I expect to happen. In Diva Limited right here, this is another stock that will could easily get swept up in there. Thing is, a lot of people don't know what these stocks, their names. They're going to do very bland, generic cannabis stock searches in Google. They're not going to be able to find these. So getting into these kind of stocks, if you wanted to play that potential move, uh, you know, these nobody really knows these names. They'll know the bigger names. They'll know the Nasdaqs, but they're not going to know a company like this. So should these kinds of stocks start moving, potentially, they could really accelerate simply because there would be like, oh, that's one, and a mad rush happens. It'll be interesting. I've been gearing up for the last 45 days and the last four months of this year. I've been doing this for the past like six to nine months, getting ready for these moments. Get a plan. Get ready. Something big might happen. 
Make sure you check out my video courses. Links are down below. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.